and check, same idea. Now we move on to rule generation. How we can generate rules? Rule generation must be done only on the frequent item set. So after we come up with the frequent item sets, only then we can use the frequent ones to generate rules, okay? This is the idea of association analysis in general. It has nothing to do with a priori. A priori, we used it just to uh, eliminate the, or try to reduce the process of candidate generation to make it faster and more efficient. But now we're done. We had F3 using brute force or using a priori, it doesn't matter. Now we reach into the rule generation. When it comes to rule generation, only you can use frequent item set to generate rules. So given a frequent item set, L, find all non-empty subsets of F belong such F as a rule, belong to L, such that F can lead to L minus F. So that means any items you include in the F side, on the left-hand side, cannot show up on the right-hand side. That's it. So you cannot have cook lead to cook, for example, right? Satisfies the minimum confidence. So now when we look to the rules, eventually, we need to calculate their confidence. And only those rules that fulfill the confidence will be remain. The others we can eliminate. So for example, if you have frequent item set, A, B, C, D, then you can generate all these rules from one item set. Okay, just from one item set, you can generate all these rules, follow this concept. So for example, you may decide having A, B, C lead to D, or maybe a, B, D lead to C, or A, C, D lead to B, B, C, D lead to A, and so on and so forth. So you can generate all these rules. Okay, this is why we said actually it can be expensive following the brute force. Just from six items, we can generate 602 rules. So look here, just from one item set, we generated all these rules. Okay, now if you look uh, to the uh, what's called the rules. So if L equal K, then there are two K minus two candidates associated association rules. So here just to calculate how many rules you can generate. So if you take the number of items inside like this one four, so two to the power of four, how much you get? Two by two, four, four by two, eight, eight by two, 16. 16 minus two, 14. So you should have here 14 rules. You can generate 14 rules. Okay, ignoring this one. Why minus two? Minus two because we ignore the one that leads to nothing or nothing lead to items. Okay. In general, confidence does not have an anti monotone property. So now we're looking. Can we try to eliminate the rule generation following the same way like we have done in a priori? So they tell us, in general, confidence does not have anti-monotone property, like the way in candidate generation that we saw in a priori. Okay, so meaning, if you calculate the confidence for such a rule, okay, then this confidence for this rule can be larger or smaller than smaller rule. Because there earlier we said for a smaller subset, smaller subset usually have higher support than any superset or, or equal. But here we cannot have the same. We cannot say uh, any superset or super rule, if you like to say the same terms, we, we cannot say any super rule may have similar or lower confidence than its sub rules. Cannot. Because here it tells you it can have larger confidence or can be smaller. So we cannot apply the same concept of anti-monotone that we found in a priori principle for candidate generation. <clears throat> However, confidence of rule generated from the same item set can have anti-monotone. So as long as the rules are generated from the same item set, like ABCD, and then you generated the 16 item uh, rules, then for only these 16 rules, you can apply anti -monoton. For other item sets, cannot compare, okay? Cannot consider for others. So only for the same, same item set. So for example, suppose ABCD is your frequent, and then you got here, we're comparing three item sets, uh, sorry, three rules. All these rules come from the same item set, ABCD, 
A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. They come from the same item set, okay? Now, if you calculate the confidence for the super rule or if, where you have many items on the left-hand side, then the confidence must be greater or equal to this rule, and this rule confidence must be greater or equal to this rule, okay? So in uh, this case, this, we have anti-monotone. But if you are looking for other item sets and then taking the confidence of this one and comparing it with the confidence for, for uh, other rule from other item set, cannot. Okay? Clear? Confidence is anti-monotone with respect to the number of items on the right-hand side of the rule. So you look into the number of items on the right-hand side of the rule, as we said, as long as you are using the same frequent item set. So in this case, you can also apply candidate pruning for rule generation, for rules, okay? So in this case, if a rule X leads to Y minus X does not satisfy the confidence threshold, then any rule which has also items from uh, similar coming from the same item set where X is a subset of this X must not satisfy the confidence of the threshold. So meaning, looking back to this example, if we calculate the confidence for this rule, A, B, C, D, A, B, C leads to D, and then we found this rule does not fulfill the minimum confidence threshold, then none of these rules will be, will I mean satisfy the condition, none, okay? So in this case, we can do rule pruning on these rules. Okay, so here again, looking into the lattice of rules, this we call it the lattice of rule. If we found such rule is, is, uh, has low confidence, then none of its other rules will have higher confidence. 